do the Watlington hedges. So we're just here in Britwell Siloam. It's a kind of untypical area of hedgerows in a sense because it's very, very open fields. Britwell never had a, such a, a big enclosure um, process as a lot of the parishes around here. And of course, we've got the Icknield Way. Um, and historically, I think I'm right in saying that each parish along the spring line enclosed the Icknield Way during the time of the enclosures to different widths. Each parish actually chose the width of the Icknield Way. Uh, but we will find quite a lot of species. It's not an ancient hedge just because it's the Icknield Way. You know, it was a sort of enclosed at the time, early enclosures. OK, so if we look at this, um, the survey, we are in the process, obviously, of finding out all the landowners um, names and addresses and contacts for Watlington. I think Charlotte's actually worked out that we've got 45 kilometres of hedge in the parish, which is really surprised me. I must admit that's fantastic. Of course, they're going to be very different from the bottom to the top. The bottom hedges are going to be typically um, hawthorn hedges, I would say. Not so much here, but in Watlington, a lot of hawthorn hedges. And then as we get up onto the top, um, you'll be, find a lot more hedges dominated perhaps by hazel. Just the different soils and the history of the farming, small fields at the top and open field down the bottom. So when we come to our hedge, one of the first things we need to do is to um, measure it. Now, a lot of that can be done, I think, probably from maps for those that, uh, yeah, online, you know, virtual sort of maps for those that can do that. If we were doing the hedge that we're looking at Britwell Hill there, that would take quite a time to measure that one. There's nothing wrong with that. I've got a wheel in the car. We can borrow the wheel when we go out to measure, to be exact. But should it be a huge, great big one, then I think we can probably do that by just marking dots on, on your Google Maps kind of thing. We need to decide, first thing, if there's any gaps over 20 metres within the hedge. But where we have a gap greater than 20 metres, we, we technically end that hedge and then start another one off the, off the 20 gaps. The nose is where your hedge meets another hedge or where there is a gap in the hedge of 20 metres or more or where the hedge structure changes dramatically. It does occasionally happen that you have a very low trimmed hedge and then for some reason or other halfway down it's been left alone and it's now a sort of 25, 30 foot hedge. The guy ran out of diesel on his tractor and went home and never got back to it one day. Literally as simple as that. It can just be inexplicable but any drastic change in the in the type of hedge that would also count as the start finish of a, of a new hedge because it would be difficult to get your 30 meters to your 30 meter sample area to span both as it were where the hedge meets another feature such as a wall or a woodland we won't have walls around here but we probably have that woodland and when you can see from there that when we meet a woodland that is counted as two um, connections so it's the actual hedge itself and it's counting like a t-junction in effect we're counting two connections. We're almost pretending it's two hedges coming in, but it's a woodland. Um, so you can see the diagram there of how to count the nodes. So in the, in the centre down the bottom there, you'll see one which has actually got four hedges coming into it effectively, hasn't it? But that's three nodes there. So you're not counting the, the one at the end, your own hedge that you're surveying. We then have to find a, a 30 metre section. Um, and a, a, a 30 meter section that is we dis decide is typical of that length of hedge that sometimes can be quite difficult because you do get you know different types of one section might be a long section maybe pure hawthorn and then you may get a mixed hedge for some reason um, one reason might be that um, they often when they used to burn stubble and straw in fields it would they'd have fires they'd get out of control and this was very very common and sometimes it took out an entire length of hedgerow so although we look at it and it's a continuous green lane it's a very different thing, that solid blackthorn hedge to the hawthorn hedge. So we've got to try and find something that we think is typical. One first thing to do is to, if you haven't got the wheel to measure out your 30 metres, is try and get used to your own step. The length of your step is quite interesting how it varies with us. I've got some sticks marked out here with 2.5 metres on, metre, metre, and then 0.5. And it's kind of a fun thing just to check. Start back here so you get into your stride a bit. And then, so I know my meter because I measure out a lot of things like that is pretty well a meter ish some people the other day found that actually they, they, they felt more comfortable doing two to make a meter but just be aware of your own step when you're measuring out the 30 meters it's kind of an idea to just get an idea of that it goes on to talk about the gaps in the hedge which as I say is a break in the canopy and it then says the woody structure of the hedge does not meet over the top. And then you go over the page to that little diagram there, that silhouetted diagram. So we've got lots of gaps where the, where the canopy is not covering, they're not touching. But where the tree canopy, the one on the right, for example, spans the gap, and you often will find a gap under a, tr a big tree like that because it's throwing so much shade, then that we, we would count as continuous. That wouldn't count as a, a large gap. 
So that's the first thing to do in your hedge is to look out for how many gaps, the total length of the hedge, how many gaps there are, what sort of size are they, etc. So we've got these sticks, this is the height, um, 2.5, this is just a handy sort of size to have. One of the things at this time of year which is quite interesting is most of the hedges, which is really good, haven't been trimmed yet. Normally, this is a really unusual year for me around here because normally the farmers go straight on the land immediately after harvest when the land is dry, whoosh, blitzed and all the berries and everything gets knocked off as it does with annual trimming anyway, as I think I've mentioned to you before. But we can't prophesize, if that's the word, what this person's going to do to this hedge. He might have decided to lay it in 10 years' time and he's now going to let it go up. We don't know. Or in two weeks' time, he's going to come in here and, and cut it really, really hard. I would try and get you to take... Don't measure the very, very top, or indeed of that elder. I don't think that's necessarily representative of the whole hedge. I would say somewhere, you know, that average... There's the trim line there. We can sort of tell that roughly, yeah. but let's tr tr try and take a sort of an average of, of, of about there as the hedge height. Because I think if we go up there and then it's cut down in two weeks time, we're doing a completely false reading of the hedge. So take a sort of an average, not down to necessarily the cut, and the same with width. Rather than coming out to there, I'd just sort of take it to, not into the trim line, but about there somewhere. And literally, with the, with your colleague the other side, uh, trim, push it through. I, would have the 0.5 the other side as it were, excuse me madam, <laughs> and get it to about there. That's, that to me is the average. So those are those recordings. The basil canopy. One of the origins I think I said on my talk on, on, online was this idea of placing a hedgerow in favourable condition or not in favourable condition with lots of criteria. One of the main criteria we look at is this, the basal canopy, the distance from there up to the average of the lower branches. And that's because, you know, if, if we had sheep in this field, for example, they'd be right in there and you'd be a browse line about here and there'd be absolutely no cover in that hedge whatsoever. It wouldn't be shielding wildlife. It wouldn't, you know, provide being a wind resistance or anything. So we'd kind of get one, the average of this basal flora, which there is, it's about there, you know, here is a good basal floor, you know, down to the ground, so it's about there. But we want to get an idea of, within your 30 metres, the average height of the basal floor. Now that might require five or six little samples. This is like having a woodland edge. These are all woodland edge species, these things mostly. Um, it's going to get to a point where it's going to start to degrade if we neglect it. And if we keep trimming it to the same height, it'll also degrade through too much pressure and stress. So I developed this one to 10 scale to look at, particularly in winter, so that you can place each hedge in this scale. One being completely over trimmed, fading away, absolutely useless, and complete ne neglect. It's really, really tall or indeed turning into a line of trees. The People's Trust for Endangered Species took that idea and put it in the survey, which I think is really great because then that offers the little bit of a, a management advice to the landowners. Uh, at the end, you do a little score thing and it comes up with a suggested management to where your hedge is in the one to 10 cycle. And we would like to see, I personally would like to see a hedge revolving over 50, 60 years between number four and say seven or eight. And once it goes off the scale, either end, then we've kind of lost the options of management and you very often have to start again by pulling it out and replanting another one, that's very drastic, or, or you just leave it to be a line of trees and there's nothing wrong with a line of trees, but it's not defined as a hedgerow anymore. But we have to rejuvenate hedges on a cycle. So, so that's where we're at in, in this. It asks you to put it into, a, it's actually way easier to do, I must say, in the winter months when you can see right in. But we don't necessarily want to be doing a survey in the winter months because the species ID would be quite difficult. And then at the bottom, it just talks about this hard knuckle at a trim line. And again, you won't necessarily see that at this time of year, but sometimes you can. You probably know what I'm talking about. It's where they trim down to the same height constantly. The plant is literally stressed and contorts almost into what I call this sort of knuckle. And to me, that's a sort of a message to the landowner, like back off, <laughs> give it a break. <laughs> Cut, in, um, incrementally raise the uh, cutting line a little bit. Uh, measuring the undisturbed ground and perennial vegetation. That's from the uh, uh, edge of the hedge outwards. And there are two measurements here. Measurement A is a measurement from the trunks at the base of the trees. So in there, literally at the trunks where you can see, that one's quite out a bit, but the average place is probably in there where the trunks are. Into uh, this side, where there is any management that may damage the root. So if this were ploughed, you know, sometimes farmers come right up to the hedge. 
when we were in the EEC, remember that when the farmers got their grants, one of the cross compliances was that uh, from the centre of the hedge, they were not allowed to disturb the ground two metres from the centre of the hedge each, each side. Um, but that's something we'll look for from the, from, the, from the stems in there outwards, what is the undisturbed ground? This is a little ambiguous because the farmer's got a margin here. He's being paid for having this sort of eight metre margin probably all the way around the field. So B actually starts from here, your average width of the hedge, and then if the distance of that to the undisturbed ground. Is there any margin at all to allow um, herbs to grow? And oft, more often than not these days, they don't because of course the fertiliser and the spray drifts into the bottom and you just get these nettles and docks and things like that. The column, it says here, column two, percentage coverage of the top five, five most dominant species. So what that, in your 30 metre section, if it's a completely pure hawthorn hedge, then it's going to be just hawthorn. And let's say you had a couple of bits of elder, you would might probably put 95% hawthorn, 2% elder, or whatever you chose you know, to be. If you've got more species like here, it's a little more difficult. And on the first evening we had, a couple just went along here and hit through them completely and I realised what was going on. A lot of this has been gapped up, not the blackthorn, but, and typically, um, wrongly, some people plant hedgerows, they'll go 10 metres of wayfaring tree, 10 metres of spindle, 10 metres of dogwood, 10 metres of hawthorn, and we couldn't, it was quite difficult. What's the, they all seem to be equal percentage, if you see what I mean. It's a wrong way of planting a hedge. But basically, if you were looking at this section, section here, we could say that that's pretty, I'm, where I'm looking there, not anywhere else, is 100% blackthorn, you know. So that's what that we're looking for here, the top five most dominant species. Isolated hedgerow trees. So it says, please count and record the tree species in the whole hedge you're surveying, which does mean you probably do have to walk the whole thing. Um, so column three logs, mature trees with any tree of any tree with more than a 20 centimetre diameter at breast height. And then young trees, and we would say less than 20 centimetres diameter. Yeah. Stemmed maiden tree, just assess the DBH of the main stem. Uh, if the tree fork's be below breast height, measure the diameter below the fork. If you think you're looking at a coppice tree, look at the diameter of the base of the coppice stool. Um, I, that would be unusual to find one of those as a tree, but uh, we, we may. Well, I'd say the average is about, there. Okay. I would say that's 1.75. 1.75. Yeah. 